guest is the UK's number one home workout coach. At just 24 years old, she has built an impressive and loyal following on Instagram with over 850,000 followers. But more importantly for all of us here today, she's built a massive business too. She has over 65,000 paying subscribers who pay $15.99 every month. Do the maths! Almost entirely on her own, during lockdown, she's becoming the next household name in fitness. Please welcome Courtney Black! Oh, great to see you, Courtney. You've no idea. No one's ever been more pleased to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go home. So, no, please don't go home. <laughs> so then, right, we're going to start, as, as you appreciate, quite a few people here. Yep. Until we announced that you were coming. Nobody knew who I was. <laughs> that is probably the case. <laughs> So tell us the story. So go, 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 tell us how on earth did you get to this place where you've got this amazing business, all these followers, all sorts of different products, which we'll explore in a minute or two. Mm. How, where did it come from? How did it all start? Tell us the story. So obviously it's all great having followers, whatnot, but as you probably will all guess, that followers don't necessarily mean customers. Um, so there's loads of people that are followers, and it just means followers, unfortunately. Like, followers don't necessarily mean they're going to buy something, right? So you've got to think about how you're going to make that the bigger picture. I've, quite, I've had quite a few followers for years. So I was about 18, I had about 100,000, then I had a quarter of a million. And before lockdown, I had 260. So let's just go back a little bit then. Okay, so let's just go back a little bit further then. Let's go, then. let's go back to little Courtney. So where did yeah. you grow up? Bow, East London. Okay. So I've, I lived there until I was 20. Um, was a dancer, I was a professional Latin dancer. So I've always been a bit of a show girl. Always been very... In your face, like okay. always ready to be centre of attention, which probably has helped me quite a bit because I feel like I'm quite confident. Um, you but I never, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I've never really knew like what I was passionate about, so I always wanted to trot around an office in heels and be some sort of banker or something like that. Um, and you did that, didn't you? That, that yes, was... I was an accountant. Soon realised that I wasn't trotting about in heels, and I absolutely hated it. Um, and I used to like run into the bathroom to get away and just go on my phone for hours on end. And I always used to like put my head on the radiator after I get sent home, pretend I was sick. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it wasn't for me at all. And I soon found out that it wasn't for me. So, so what age did you leave school? I left when, when I was first year in college. Okay, so, so like I always, 17. Yeah, so yeah. I always wanted to be a maths teacher, but then I soon found out I was doing maths, economics, history and accounting at college, but absolutely hated it. So I'd done A-level maths when I was like 15, I was a proper like nerd, and then I just soon found out that I just hated being told what to do, hated learning, so okay. I, I needed to work. All right, so you, see, so, you, so you left college, got the job, done, well, hated I was the doing, job. I was doing an apprenti apprenticeship, apprenticeship role for a year, and then I started doing AAT and accounting at the same time, absolutely hated it. Okay, yeah, all right. So, so, and so what happened? Did, did you leave? Did you get fired? No, I've never been fired, which <laughs> I'm actually quite shocked about, to be fair, because I used to call in sick so much. I think people liked me. That was the thing. Like, I always used to suck them up a little bit. They, they, <laughs> they liked me. So they, couldn't, they didn't really want to ever tell me off. But I used to like... For me, fitness was always something that I'd done on the side. So I love training. I actually had an eating disorder. So I took it quite seriously as the fact of... I was quite addicted to it, and I had an eating disorder really bad when I was in the office, which probably made me not enjoy the work even more. But then I found out that I was always going back to fitness, so always going back to the gym, always going back to this. So I decided, alongside my accounting role, I paid to do a personal training course. Okay. So I didn't have any previous school education on it, and it was all myself doing it. And it was mainly just to learn how to make myself look better, to be honest with you. It was quite superficial at first. And then I found out that I absolutely loved it started personal training, and I kept that accounting role. So I'd done the accounting role, and then I'd go train my clients for an evening, weekends, bank holidays, all becomes, you're right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to fall off. an interesting story, folks, all right. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah. I'll stop encouraging you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it was quite full on. I was shattered, to say the least. I used to, like, sleep in my car on my brakes and stuff. But I absolutely loved it, so I didn't mind. And then I took the plunge to do personal training full-time 
But then I thought, I was getting a following at the same time, so I'd be posting all my videos and all things like that, and how I actually... Is this mainly on Instagram? Yeah. yeah that's, where, that's where the audience is. Yeah, goes. so like workout videos, client videos. Because to be honest with you, when people come to a personal trainer, they normally come because they don't enjoy training. Mm -hmm. So how can you make people come back when they don't like where they're going? And you've got to make it enjoyable, otherwise you're not going to keep your clients. And I think that's a key thing for personal trainers is you've got to make it fun. You've got okay. to make them want to come back. You've got to at least make them like you and want to spend time with you. So if that means going out to breakfast them one day when they don't want to train, that's what you've got to do. You've got, okay. to, got to adapt to the situation. Okay. But I thought I was getting all these followers, but obviously they're not going to come and train with me, travel all the way. So I started doing boot camps on weekends. I'd travel up, and I, one, one weekend, I mean, I was 21, I think I earned like eight grand in a weekend. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> I was like, lovely. And then I thought, nice. And then, but then even with that, you can't do that every weekend because you're not going to go to the same locations every yeah. weekend. So I then started making e-books and fitness guides. And I think the first one sold like 40,000 copies. I think it cost me like 300 quid to make it. And it was like, and then obviously word of mouth, even if this... Where, did, where were you picking up? So that's the, the, the idea for that. Where did that come from then? To the just, first I just e thought of it. Literally, I just thought, okay, so I'm training my clients. I'm doing boot camps. Obviously, other people was doing similar things with books yeah. and stuff. I'm not, I couldn't get a book deal. So I thought, all right, I'll just make an e-book. Put my phone, phone on self-timer, mid-squat, standing up, sent it to a graphic designer, 300 quid, lovely. Sold it. Done five of them. And that's where the idea of the app come from, because obviously if the right. e-books are selling, an app's going to sell even better. We'll get onto the app in a minute or two. Though. Yeah. I'm just going to get the story through this. So, so let's get this right. So, so, so you've a um, bit nerdy maths geek person, mm -hmm. wants to go work in office in accountancy. So start the apprenticeship, studying for the AAT, mm -hmm. burning your head on the radio, just trying to get sent home sick. <laughs> um, doing I've not the done that recently, by the, the way. Doing the personal... <laughs> again, I'm just glad you're here. Um, <laughs> doing the... Um, <laughs> He's got this picture of Peter Jones with his head on the radiator. Um, <laughs> it's quite tickle me. The, um, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, um, you've, um, you're then doing the PT stuff part-time. Yeah. You're learning more about that and the psychology with the clients, keeping the clients. You start to extend the area a little bit, so you do the boot camps, etc. Mm -hmm. Recognise that that's limited in terms of how frequently you can do that. You see other people in the industry that are doing the, the books and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think I'll do the e-book. Yeah. You know, adapt, just do it in a very pragmatic, just get on and do it, which yeah. is, we talk a lot here about it's not what you know, it's what you do. It's not so, about the resources either, I don't think, sometimes. Yeah. Okay, that's really interesting. So, yeah, because like you said, just doing it on the phone, mm -hmm. I guess your phone is your, mm. your, your, your like key, key thing. And, and, and all your time you're doing this on Instagram, your followers are, are growing. Yeah. So you're, you're getting uh, more and more kind of, yeah. kind of followers. But it okay. did, it, then it went, mm. Okay. So it got to a point where it just stopped. You're still doing the same sort of thing. I think sometimes as well, people get so obsessed with how many followers they've got that they forget about the reason why they're doing it. And you're constantly just trying to get more followers rather than actually trying to keep your audience that you've got now. And I think that's how I sort of got. And people were sort of getting a bit bored because... I was always trying to like get more followers, get more try, try follow trends and stuff, rather than actually posting valuable information that your current followers want. Okay. And that's a big lesson that I've learned, to be fair. And that's something that I really focus on now is always making sure that everything you post, you're not just posting it for the sake of it. You're not making content or releasing content for the sake of it. You're actually doing it because it's got value behind it and people are actually going to benefit from it. The people that have been with you the whole time are not going to get bored as well. So, so what, and this is interesting, especially for those of you here this morning for the early session, because we, we talked a lot about this, about the, once you've got a customer, as it were, mm. a follower in, in kind of your world. It's hard to keep but, it. What, well, but it's harder to get new ones. It's, it's easier to keep the ones you've got mm. if you give that some focus, which yeah, is what you're you doing. Yeah, you give the focus, yeah. Because you've got, and you've got your own little language, haven't you? Because you, you, what do you call your followers? They're warriors. Called, they're warriors. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. Do you know what? I don't actually know. I think I said it on one thing, and I was like, that sounds quite cool. I mean, as well, I think a, a lot of the time people are so easy to take the piss out of other people. And of course, when the first thing you start thinking of slogans and you start thinking of business ideas, you're always going to be worried that someone's going to say something, right? So when I did say that, I probably thought, God, oh, I'm going to get the mic taken out of me there. But if it feels right and it feels natural and it feels like it's getting a good response, and just go with it, I yeah, think. Yeah, because that will, as, an, as a, an outsider, in fact, I probably ought to share... Um, just give me for one minute, how I first came across Courtney, mm -hmm. um, which is really, um, and I'm not sure, I think, I think it's actually my daughter's fault rather than my wife's, but, um, but I, before I ever saw you, I heard you. 
<laughs> because um, what started to happen oh, uh, earlier, well, earlier this year, um, most mornings, um, Tabitha and Sue would do a workout when the gyms were all shut and stuff, and they were going to work in the kitchen. And um, I think most of them, I'd have been off at work earlier than that, but at weekends, they still do the workout, and, yeah. and I just did, I just ignore what was going on. And, you know, Get involved? No, not at all, not in the slightest. <laughs> And, um, and, and, and what happened, I didn't get involved at all until, um, until August. And I was aware of you, kind of in the very, but didn't really have any interest in it whatsoever. And in August, <laughs> no, I'll be honest about this. It's well, but, and again, as I'm not, I'm not caught in this, well, no I'm in your target market, up. but yeah. <laughs> 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 I walked straight into that one, right. But here's what happened. So in, in August, Sue and I went to Greece just for 10 days, just the two of us. And when we got to the hotel, it was a lovely hotel, and Sue is a bit of a gym bunny, and she loves going to the gym. And um, at reception, we're checking in, she's saying, where's the gym? And, and so you have to, um, because of the COVID, the one restriction we got in the hotel is you mm. have to book the gym. Mm. Only one kind of family or couple can yeah. go in at any one time. So I said, well, I'll come to the gym. I'll just I'll dick about while you do whatever you do. And um, so we went to the gym, and Sue took the iPad. So we're going to this gym in Greece, and I, you know, and I'm, well, I'm sat just fiddling on some weights somewhere. She puts you on the iPad, and and so now I'm in this room where I'm now going to I'm listening now to your session, and and, and it is um, I mean you're very uh, your enthusiasm is I think is like mm. I would say your biggest kind of strength. Everyone kind of loves that, and you are very authentic, mm. which I think is another really key as an mm. observer. I think one of the key lessons we are, what, what, that you've managed to pull off so well because you're very authentic. But then, so it was, Sue does the workout, we're having dinner this evening, and I'm saying, where, where did you find this from? And she said, oh, it's calling me back, she's amazing. And, um, and then we got talking, and then she starts telling me, oh, I've got this app. And I discovered then, that I'm paying £15.99 a month <laughs> to the app, but which, which I'm very happy about, so that's not a problem. But, but I'm now, but then the business brain kicks in. I said, well, how many people are paying for apps? She said, oh, there's thousands. That's said, right. So then I did a little bit of a... All I've got to do is dad go down. Well, no, I do, but I do a little bit of a Google, and yeah. then I find out the numbers, because the numbers are seriously impressive. Yeah. And I'm thinking, fuck, this is like, this is, this is proper, is this? So, I then, so, then, so that's when I then called the office. I said, can we try and track down Courtney Black? Because this is just a brilliant story that I'd love to get at the convention. And that yeah. was, that, which is kind of, that's the very short version of how we've, we've kind of got here today. But so, so you, again, pick up the story. So PT in the spare time, doing the books, got the, you know, the thing goes on. But then this app then, because this is, this for me, this is quite a big differentiator that you have done. Mm. Um, I know there are other people who've got apps, but yeah. very few, if any, have got an app that is as successful as yours. Why did you go down the app route? Well, obviously, you never expect something's going to be... I think my target was 7,000 subscribers a month, which is still incredible, don't get me wrong. But, um, oh yeah, I think the e-books, for how simple they was, they done so well. And I was, as again, when I first done them, when I was like 21, 22, I was taken aback. Obviously, you get this, get this sound, yeah, and you're like, wow, this is like mad. I think I had a boyfriend at the time, and I was like, I've done this many. He was like, no. And I was, he was like, you've done that. And I was like, yeah, no, I've, I've done this many. How can you do it on a bigger scale? Because these ebooks are great, but they're eight, 12 week plans. They're getting resent on to other people. Yeah. So all of a sudden it's going to come to an end because they're either going to be bored of that, that. You can only, I mean, not everyone wants to either print it out or have it on their phone either. So I thought, okay, fitness app, you've got the videos on there. And at first of all, it was a completely gym app, it had not a single home workout on it. So I invested every single penny that I earned from the ebooks into this app. I mean, if it went wrong, I was screwed. But you, I had all these green screens, I had the best of the best, and I thought, this is incredible, because I've seen fitness apps before, and I thought, this is great, even I'd use one as a fitness trainer, if it had something yeah. that I enjoyed on it. Recipes, who uses recipe books anymore? Even though I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great if like, you're on holiday, and you want to do the training and stuff like that, you don't always want to, I mean, I was a personal trainer myself, and I even felt sometimes that I was ripping people off. They come in, they pay 50, 60, in Mayfair, you're paying like 100, 120 pounds for a session. And I've seen people, and they're not even present with their clients mm -hmm. sometimes. And I just think you do feel like you're taking the mick a bit with the money that you're paying. Yeah. So if you can pay like 15, 99 a month, and you've literally got a personal trainer with you telling you what to do, and you can't really go wrong, I just thought it's a bit of a no-brainer. Of course, people are going to want to invest in it. And then you sort of become reliant on it as well, because I don't know about if you've ever experienced having a trainer, having a therapist, having a swimming coach, you kind of miss having them there if you've had them for so long. Even like having a mas mas massage every month or going for your facial. When you stop having it, you yeah. feel like it's missing. Yeah. So if you stop subscribing to this app, you're going to feel like it's like missing. And then obviously, 
lockdown happened, I obviously panicked because, I mean, I've never done a single home workout in my life. I hated them. And my app was all gym workout based. So I've just invested everything. That's my whole thing. I had to pivot it. I had to think on my feet and I had to start doing the home workouts. So I then refilmed everything, even though I'd paid for all these amazing studios. I had to refilm it all in my living room. But that was a masterstroke, wasn't it? Looking back. Yeah. That was your masterstroke. Yeah. And I sort of had to wing it. Yeah. And then I started doing the live workouts, not to, I mean, I worked for free for six months, which I think is a really important point. I didn't, during lockdown, I didn't earn anything for the first six months because no one was subscribing to the app because they was getting it for free. Yeah. On Instagram, I was doing every single day I was towed up, even on Sundays to do stretch sessions. And then I thought, okay, so this can't go on forever. I'm not going to carry on doing free sessions forever. I do actually have a life and I've actually got to earn money. So how am I going to get this onto the app? And then that's obviously when I thought of the real-time workouts and how I'd then start moving my clients from there. Because there's 30,000 people doing these every day. And that was only live. Mm -hmm. They could then do that 24 hours after. I never knew how many people was doing this. So then when I started doing the, obviously, the on-demand classes on my app, yeah. that's when they started moving over to subscribers. So that's where that's all come from. Yeah, and this is at the time, of course, when, I mean, Joe Weeks was getting all the publicity, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. And, and, and he was doing his stuff on YouTube every day. Yeah. And I think it's quite interesting, because, I mean, I mean what well, you can't fault, um, I've never met Joe Weeks, but, you know, he, 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 he he's did, brilliant at what he does, got a yeah. tremendous profile of the whole thing, but... I'm way more respectful of what you've achieved. Thanks. Because um, you know, he hasn't got his... I mean, he's doing, he's doing fine, don't get me wrong. He doesn't, he doesn't need sympathy. But I think it's tremendous. But also, the temptation for a lot of people will be thinking, oh, fitness, Joe Wicks has got that market cornered. But of course, there isn't. There's lots of little niches. There's lots of people... You know, and I'm interested as well to understand who your market are. Because um, again, I, think, mm. I know a bit about it, but um, your customers are not perhaps typically what people might think. I forget, like, 70 year olds doing them. That's what I mean. It's brilliant, yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's so good. Like, sometimes people that tag me in the things, well, we've got, like, a little um, Facebook group, and there's, like, 70,000 people in this Facebook group. That little group. Facebook group that you've got, yeah, with 70,000 <laughs> people small. in it. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they all, like, oh, there's, like, they have their wedding, they put their pictures on there. They're, like, oh, I don't know, they've got, gone to their 70th birthday party. People have, like, just come out of hospital, and then it's helped them get, recover quickly, and it's just, it's incredible. Like, and I always say it's the community as well. Like, you've really got a look at who you're helping and for me that's that's the best bit yeah and that well that's what comes across mm. like the, your authenticity i think mm. is, is is like is like the biggest the biggest the biggest strength so i mean there are thousands of these as fitness instructors mm. that, uh, there'll be many that are more qualified than you are 100%, i guess as well yeah. is, is the truth of it but but you've managed to rise above almost all of them mm. what, what what do you put that down to what what, what is it what made that happen just, just like being who I am because like, I, I wasn't trying to like impress anyone on the thing like, I'm not being funny but when you've got 30,000 people and you're doing burpees it's not exactly flattering is it and you're just like I'm screaming into the camera that my neighbours thought I was nuts honestly I was in a flat at the time so I literally had the space in between here I'm doing tuck jumps screaming I had so many complaints but I mean, I used to do these cooking videos and I had a fake island where I'd wheel it across in between my two little slivers and it's just like I just think everyone just sort of, no one wants to see a big fancy studio or no one wants to see someone who's all propped up with a mic on them. I mean, I tried the mic thing, felt like Britney for a bit, but I felt ridiculous at the same time. Because <laughs> it's just like, it's a home workout for a reason. Yeah, yeah. You're doing it at home. So I don't know, like, I wouldn't want to be following someone who's not really being relaxed and calm. And I just think that's, that's sort of where it comes from, really. And, and again, when we talk, about, we talk about video and we talk about people buying people, and stuff, and I, again, this is, I think this is absolutely your, your, your core thing, because you just have, you've put yourself out there, yeah. and people have bought into you. And yeah, don't get me wrong, like, if I started doing these live workouts, and I only got, like, a couple of thousand people, I still would have carried on doing them. Even a couple of hundred people, because it's better than doing it on your own, right? And 300 customers is better than f no customers. But, obviously, the more you show up, and the more, like, I didn't automatically get that. I think the first couple of weeks, I think I got, like, 300, then 500, and I think it went up to like, I was buzzing with like 1,000. And then you just keep going and you keep and going. And what was growing it? What was happening at that time to grow it? Were you doing anything to grow the numbers? No, word of mouth, I think. Yeah, just obviously I showed up every day. Yeah, I released sure. schedules. So everyone knew that I was going to be there. And even when I felt rough, I still went. Um, I still showed up and I still done it, even if I just said, look, bear with me a little bit here. And I think, yes, yeah, just word of mouth, I think. And you just, as I say, you've got to make, I would, the worst thing for me is, Having, I know it sounds like a bit of a gym, gym bod here, but having a bad workout session puts you in a bad mood. 
It's the same as waking up and having, I don't know, going to your favourite coffee shop and it being an absolutely disgusting coffee. It's going to ruin your day, isn't it? It's going to ruin your morning. Or going in and... I can only imagine. Being shouted at by your boss first thing in the morning is going to ruin your day. So coming in and really looking forward to something and me not being on top form or me not putting together something that's fun or exciting would ruin someone's morning. It wouldn't make them productive at work. So I felt that sort of responsibility. So I made sure that I really planned out every session. I made the music banging. I made everything really fun yeah. and interesting for everyone. And I think that's sort of what obviously helped me get returning people as well because they knew what they were so coming in for. we talked in the referral session this morning because here we've got a living, breathing manifestation of everything we talked about in that very first session. Because what Courtney's focus on was being the best you could be. Yeah. The word I, we talked about being about an extraordinary customer experience this morning. That's essentially what your focus was. Mm. And by doing that, you got the referrals in our language yeah. because people passed it on and people told their friends. Nothing better than free referrals. Other people, well, it's true, yeah. But you get them when you do great things. For yeah. you. you don't have to go out there and ask for them. Just by doing what you do the best you can. Uh, in Sometimes a way that, it don't work out. Sometimes I try new things in classes and people have a go at me and they go, oh, I didn't like that or found that boring or I didn't like this one. But you've just got to try things out, I think. And there's no point always trying to please your whole audience either because that's never going to happen, do you know what I mean? But having a good variety and mixing it up, I think is really important as well. So you're trying to hit as many different people as possible, but still knowing who your target audience is. Yeah, so who is your target audience? I'd say mums. Um, you say that though, like, I don't know, between... 20 and 70. <laughs> I don't really know. I'd say there's 20 and 45 is the main. That's your sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, women mainly. There is quite a lot of men that do it as well, but I think they're normally getting dragged in by their wives. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, I can't comment. Um, <laughs> so, um, anyone that's looking to grow a following mm. based on your experience, and when it's, I recognise you, you know, and you've, well, despite your tender years, you've been growing your following for quite a long time. Mm. So with, based on your experience, what advice would you give to people in terms of uh, you know, things they need to be wary of and thinking about if they're looking to grow a following on, on social? I'd say my main following started, so it's definitely how it happens. My, my following really accelerated to start with when I was being authentic and I was just posting because I loved posting it. I was posting about my eating disorder and I was helping people and I was posting things that was really valuable. Then I think... Not going to lie, my head got a bit big, started to get a bit vain, which is posting selfies, workout videos and stuff like that. People don't want to see that. They don't care. No one, everyone wants to know more about themselves than more about you. So if you're always focusing about yourself, let's be honest, no one, no one really cares unless you're a big time celebrity. So unless you're actually helping people or posting valuable content, it's very easy for people to get bored. And I, very, I realized that quite quickly. And you've got to give yourself a little bit of a kick, I think, and sometimes think, Am I actually doing stuff that people are going to find valuable and people are actually going to want to look at rather than just posting things that you care about, posting your outfit, posting your face, posting this, posting that. You've actually got to post valuable stuff that's going to help people and make them want to carry on following you. Because it's a bit easy to get that follow, but to keep the follow, I think, personally, is a lot harder because... I've unfollowed people before. So yeah. I think, oh, you're boring. Well, it's not, it's not just the follow. I guess it's also the engagement because you, exactly. you keep following, but they're not engaged. Exactly. If people are going to look at something and not want to watch it or keep engaged, and you've got to keep the customer like coming back, you've got to keep the person wanting to watch you and wanting to be interested in what you're doing and actually being genuinely interested in what you're doing as well because there's yeah. no point posting about things that you don't genuinely love or you don't believe in because I think it's... It's so easy. But it's stuff that helps others. That's, that, yeah, that, exactly. That, 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 that's the key thing. Honestly, that, that little answer is like a little mini masterclass at marketing kind of yeah. in, in, in itself. Yeah. Um, so let's, let, let's, then, let's talk about then this turning a following into a business because mm -hmm. that, that's the bit that you've done, I just think, masterfully. Mm -hmm. um, so you, money, you, you decided to... The e-book thing was the first part of it. That worked very well. Couldn't quite... Just put all your money into this app. Um, then lockdown comes and you feel that the app is now a bit irrelevant because people don't go to the gym. Mm. So you now start doing the live stuff. Got to think on your feet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're pivoted, you're doing the live stuff from your flat. Um, and, um, and, and, and at this point then, so when do the numbers start to kick in on the, on, on, on the app? Because you do keep the subscribers. Yeah. The ones that you had before lockdown, they did stay stayed with you. Yeah, I mean, obviously a couple dropped off yes. when they go back to the gym and just stuff the like two. that. Yeah. Just, just the two. Maybe the three. <laughs> um, but mm, I'd say 
obviously the main amount was when I decided to stop doing the free workouts and move it over to the app because if, if you're enjoying it, you, know, yeah, you, haven't you, really do it. Time. you haven't really got a chance. You haven't really got a choice, unfortunately. So I've got to start earning money somewhere. But, mm, yeah. And, but you explained it that way as well, didn't you? That was like, you were very yeah, honest I, about it. I, you were very honest As I say, like, obviously I felt, felt, I felt a bit bad at first. I didn't want people to like start, but unfortunately you're, you're always going to get a moaner. You're always going to have someone that's not going to want to pay. But I know my worth. I know that people will get amazing results and stuff like that. And if people like you and they believe in what you're doing, then they're going to be customers. And I think, again, what you just said, you've just got to be honest. Like, yeah. I, I just come on there. I said, look, guys, I'd love to carry on doing this. But unfortunately, you don't work for free. And I, don't, I need to start earning a bit of a living as well. And if I want to take this further, like adding new trainers on, getting new recipes, having the most amazing chefs and having the most amazing productions and putting boot camps together, it comes at a price. And you've got to... You've got to be wanting to pay that. So how did you set the price? Uh, it, would always, it was always 15 99 Yeah, I know, but how did you come up with that price? Why, why, why that price? Competitors, right. um, knowing how much sort of I wanted to earn and stuff like that, and thinking as well, if you're going to pay a personal trainer £40 an hour, or you can pay me 15 99 for 30 days or 31 days, yeah. 20, whatever the month is, works out like 50p a day. Yeah. It's less than a coffee. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So most people will pay that if they I'm, want to I'm get not, in I'm shape. okay paying it. It's okay. Yeah? Yeah, it's yeah. I'm not, I'm not, Don't not, start sharing not, devices. Not about to cancel. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I mean, I guess that it's all through, app, through the, app, through yeah, the app store. Yeah, you can't share devices so you anyway, can't, don't worry. So <laughs> yeah, no, but you're reasonably well protected there, aren't you? Yeah. Do you, do you how much do you get involved technically? Because you, you said you're a bit of a nerdy maths person to begin with. Do you, are oh, you a techie as well? Or? No. I don't know how to build an app. You're nuts. They, my app developer te tells me things, I'm like, right, okay. And things that you think are going to take an hour take like three months, <laughs> honestly. We can all relate to this. I said, oh, I want, a, I, want a, I want a barcode scanner on the app. And he told me it was going to cost me like 300 grand. I was like, okay, don't worry about that then. People can type it in. Honestly, things are so expensive. And these app developers, they're so clever. He brings, he's made his own laptop, my app developer. He's made his own laptop. It's like this big. <laughs> And he comes and plops it down at lunch and you'd think it's like something from the Middle Ages. It's probably worth about a ridiculous <laughs> amount of money. But everything takes so long to build. So long. And so that, that frustrates you a bit, I can tell. Yeah, anyone, any app developers looking for a job, holler at me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, because you are diverse, because there's lots happening, isn't there now? Just, yeah. just so people are unaware. So, although it started with fitness. Yeah. Talk us through now, because there's a number of different kind of, what do we call them, spin-offs or divisions, but there's lots of parts now to the, the kind of Courtney empire that you're building. So I've got two books looking to do the third as well with Harper Collins. It's a funny story because when my, the guy who manages all my book deals and stuff like that, when he first messaged me, I ignored him about six times. He messaged me this email going, I've worked He did that to us as well. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> he went, I've worked with 50 cent. Oh, all right, whatever, mate. <laughs> he honestly emailed so many times. He got all his mates. He's actually such a nice guy. He's lovely. But, um, and it was funny. I thought, what am I going to write a book about? Oh, what the hell am I going to write a book about? And the first one, it was sort of just like a bit how I got through my eating disorder and then a fitness book at the end. And now I found my true passion. Obviously, they're not going to straight away dive into the recipes, but I love cooking. Mm -hmm. So for me now, obviously, cooking is a big thing. I mean, I want to get on cooking programs. I want to be doing loads of things to do with food. I think a lot of people don't know a lot about food and how to make it healthy. And it's so easy to make food healthy and stuff like that. So I think there's a big gap in the market for that. And for me, that's something I'm super passionate about. And then there's other things, like I've suffered with acne my whole life. And obviously, as you guys probably, well, you may or might not know, if you've got really bad skin and then you're training, it normally makes it worse. So I think a lot of people need help with their skin. So I want to do like post-workout skincare. And I think there's just, there's so many things that I'm passionate about, but I'll never do anything that I'm not passionate about. And I think that's a, ma that's a massive yeah, thing. Okay. So the, um, I mean, yeah, I, I could vouch that the recipes again, because Sue and Tabitha, I've got... Um, What's your favourite? Well, they've... Oh, my God, I'm going to put on the spot now. But, like, every night, we have one of your dishes. I'm all told it's one of the... There was a lovely spicy prawn dish I had last Oh, week. yeah. That was really... That pasta? Was, that was... It was with some... Yeah, noodles pasta. Yeah, thing. nice. It was, it was very nice. It's called sexy pasta. There was, was wasabi... Was wasabi prawns. That's what it was. There was wasabi got prawns. Crunch. There we go. Um... <laughs> So, so any, any, any further diversity? The food's a big thing I get from that. Yeah, answer. big. Because um, you've, got, you've got a clothing range, you've got clothing these range, yeah. book deals. I mean, um, anything else in the pipeline that you were in Dubai recently? Yeah, that was doing a fitness retreat. So that was, when an opportunity comes up, I always have, like see, is it worthwhile? Is it something that I actually want to do? And then is it going to grow my business? I used to say yes to everything, right? So I used to get 
deals and I go, yeah, I'll do that, yeah, I'll do that, anything for a pound note kind of thing. But you've got to actually find out, is it actually going to benefit you in the long run? Is it going to benefit your brand? Is it going to benefit who you are? Is it, or is it going to make you look a bit stupid to be honest? Because I used to do things, I used to think, this hasn't benefited me anyway, and it's just taken my time out, and I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. And then you sort of dread doing things like that. So now I always think, is it something that I'm really passionate about and that's going to help my business and help my brand? And I think that's something you really need to think about. Is it going to actually help grow your brand? Yeah. And, the, and uh, yeah, the food thing, I suspect, will become very big yeah. for you. I think that's, that, that's People love thing, food, don't they? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so this big following you've got, there must be some downsides to it because not everyone's nice to you when you've got a big following. Do you know what I've learned? I actually had a therapist earlier this year because I found it quite overwhelming, mainly for my own, mainly because of me, because you're always trying to please everyone, I think, and you're always trying to, I don't like letting people down, so I'd get like a couple negative things, and I think, well, like, how can I change this? But you're never going to be able to please anyone. And I think it's just taught me to be a bit more relaxed and say yes to a bit more, take time off, and I think it's so important to realise you're not going to be good at everything, and you can't do everything in the business either. I've only just started really employing people mm. and knowing that I'm not going to be the best at everything. And to be honest with you, I'm not the best CEO. I'm not the best run around doing like this. You can't do your own accounts. And sometimes you need other people's advice and other people actually know better than you as well. But when it comes to following, I think if someone says something nasty or they say something about your business, are you going to listen to it? Because if you're not going to listen to it, then don't take it in. But if you're going to listen to it and grow from it, then yeah, great. That can be used as valuable information and valuable advice. But if, you're not, if you don't agree with it and you don't, you're not going to listen to it, then just how, how much time do you spend on a daily basis actually engaging with your audience? When I was in lockdown, I used to, as soon as I'd post something, I'd reply to every single person. I think this is another reason why my following got really good because I think I'm, I'd like to think I'm quite personable and approachable. Like, I always think people feel comfortable coming up and talking to me. Yeah. Like, and I, that's what I love. And I like to think people don't, ever feel on edge about that and whenever I get a comment or something I always reply to as many people as I can and that means on DMs and stuff like that try voice note people back as much as I can and that doesn't mean just looking at a message and quickly replying to it it means actually giving someone a valuable response because I think that's super important as well not but you just must get, I mean there must be like you must be getting hundreds of those yeah I mean you ain't so got to do it straight away yeah you get, get back to people in time like yeah. you haven't got to do it as soon as they message her yeah. but just relax take your time with it I mean, sometimes you can't reply to everything, but try your best, I think. Do you have help now on that yeah, side? Yeah, yeah. So, my, oh, she actually left me yesterday, but my best friend was my personal assistant, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, she's gone. Oh, dear. But now I've got Alex. Okay. She'll do. But, um, yeah, my best friend... <laughs> she's actually better than Georgia, but I won't say that to Georgia because <laughs> she's my best mate and I actually like her. But Is she still your best mate? She's still my best oh, mate, okay, but she's grown... Nice. This is another thing, like being around people, Georgia used to be really, really self-conscious and had no confidence. She's now got her own business called Master Business where she's coaching people how to grow their own business, she's doing her own podcast and it's literally just insane. So that's why we both said like, I think it's, even though she didn't want to leave, it's best that we don't actually work together anymore because okay. you need to sometimes realise that you want to grow your own thing and do your own thing and she's going to do amazing at it. Cool. So what's happening, what's the long-term plan then, Courtney? What's... What's the, uh, where's this going next? Obviously my app's my baby. So focusing everything on that, I've actually just hired two new people. So another assistant and then a brand marketing manager. Again, because even though I'm good at my own personal marketing, getting into the other markets, maybe rebranding and stuff like that is something that I might not be great at. Putting campaigns together, all the techie stuff in the background. So he's gonna be incredible at that and I think that's gonna really accelerate the brand. Then we'll have a team underneath him, obviously. The books and stuff like that. The clothing range is going to need to employ more people for that. It's a bit scary. Warehousing and stuff like that. I don't know anything about that. So I think it's good to just take a step back, be honest with yourself and know what you've got to employ as well. Yeah. You're having fun, aren't you? Yeah. It is. I, 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 it's, it's, Chilling. It's, it's really, yeah, it's really cool talking to you. And, you know, a lot of, you know, things, you know, a lot of things have fallen well for you. Yeah. But you have to, but when things fall, you have to, you have to seize those opportunities. You do, We had a yeah. guy on the sofa yesterday, John Bailey, was talking about how you know, opportunity is, is a little butterfly yeah. and it drops and you have to grab it when it's there. Yeah. And, and I think you're just a living, breathing manifestation of that. I mean, I see all these people doing the thing and they love the thing warriors. So I thought, all right, make some T-shirts. I was hand writing thousands and thousands of these T-shirts and then dropping them in bin bags to the post office just to earn like 13 quid off a T-shirt. But it adds up and you just think, oh, I'd ha I was waking up at like four in the morning to hand write all these things out. Should have just got a sticker machine, to be honest with you. But I didn't really <laughs> think about that, but... 
Someone messaged me about four weeks in, get a sticker machine. Thanks, hon. <laughs> so listen, you'll hang, you'll hang around at lunchtime in yep. our VIP lounge, yep. so people can have a little chat there and we can explore this yep. a little bit further. But thank you ever so much for coming and so sharing welcome. it. I know, I really appreciate it. Hope I filled the shoes of Peter. So, yeah, well, yeah, well, listen, we're just very grateful that, <laughs> that, 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 that you're here. I, I appreciate your, your, your honesty and your authenticity. Thank you. And, and I, honestly, I've got so much respect for what you've achieved. So I will take my metaphorical hat off to you. Oh, Let's show some easy love for Courtney Black. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.